the house of prayer with Dr. Akatofe. But only speak a word. Matthew 8 verse 8. Join Dr. Akatofe as he teaches the word of God and prays with millions across the globe, strengthening our faith in Jesus Christ our Lord. Visit Amazon for a series of books authored by Dr. Toffe. Books titled Weaving the Web of Life, A Man with a Field, and Temptation with Purpose. The House of Prayer comes your way every Tuesday on YouTube via the channel The House of Prayer with Dr. Toffe. Please do subscribe, like, and share with others. The House of Prayer with Dr. Akatofe. Proclaiming Jesus Christ through the word and prayer. Welcome to the House of Prayer with Dr. Akatofe. Last week, we looked at God's appointed time. And we came to this understanding that we must live in a mindset that God works with appointed times. Otherwise, we may complain against God or we may murmur against Him, which is not right. And today, we are looking at the topic, it is personal. When I say it is, I'm talking about the relationship that we share with Jesus Christ. The relationship that we share with Jesus Christ is personal. And we're going to consider the same story that we considered last week out of the book of Acts, chapter 3, verse 1 to 10. And the story says, Peter and John were going to the temple at the ninth hour to pray. And they encountered a lame man who the Bible says each day was carried and laid at the temple's gate called Beautiful. And what he did was to ask for money from the people who were going into the temple to pray. He saw Peter and John about to enter the temple and he asked for money. Peter looked at him, so did John. And Peter spoke up. He said, look at us, plural. Look at us. I am with John. I am Peter. I want you to look at me, Peter and John. Look at us. And the man thinking they were going to give him money, give them his attention. And Peter spoke up. Silver and gold, I do not have. But what I do have, I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And taking him by the hand, he helped him up. And the Bible says, immediately strength came into his ankle and knees, and he began to walk. And he went with Peter and John into the temple, walking jumping and praising God. And the people who knew him as the one who sat at the gate were filled with amazement and wonder. This is the story. This is the story. And we learned of God, God's appointed time. And today we are learning that the relationship that we share with Christ is personal. You see, when Peter looked at the man and John looked at the man, Peter spoke up and said, look at us. And yet, when it came to the time of proclaiming the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, he said to the man, silver and gold, I do not have singular, 
not we, singular. But what I do have, singular, not plural. I do give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. What it teaches us is the use of the name of Jesus Christ as, as, as a result of our relationship with him. It's a personal thing because in one instant he says, look at us. And yet when it came to the time to speak healing into the man's knee in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. He personalized it. He personalized it. And the idea that the use of the name Jesus Christ as a result of our relationship with him is personal was well demonstrated by the story of the seven sons of Sceva out of the book of Acts, chapter 19, verses 11 to 20. The book again is Acts, chapter 19, verses 11 to 20. It speaks of God working miracles at the hands of the Apostle Paul. So my soul that even aprons and handkerchief that has touched his body was being taken and sent to people who were sick and they received healing and evil spirits left them. The seven sons of Sceva were so amazed at the wonders and the signs that God was performing through the apostle Paul. And they thought they could invoke the name of Jesus Christ they thought they could share in the name of Jesus Christ without being connected to him through any relationship. And so one day they found a person who was demon possessed and they would say to this person, in the name of Jesus Christ, whom Paul preaches, I command you to come out. Even they, they realize that it is a personal thing. For though they were seven, when they spoke to the evil spirit in the man, they said, in the name of the Jesus whom Paul preaches, I command you. They don't say, we command you. And so they understood that it's a personal thing. But they don't realize that they have to be connected to the name of Jesus Christ by believing in his name. And because they had no connection to the name of Jesus Christ, because they had no personal relationship with Jesus Christ, one day the evil spirit in the man spoke to them. He said to them, Jesus I know, Paul I know. But who are you? And the Bible says he overpowered them and beat them up. So my soul, they ran out of the house naked. It is teaching us that for us to be able to use the name of Jesus, we have to have a personal relationship with this Jesus. And look at the confidence with which Peter spoke, silver and gold, I do not have. But what I do have, I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise and walk. Do you have that confidence? It's your relationship with Christ that's strong to be able to say to another human being who is laid in the feet that I don't have silver and gold, but I have Christ and I give you Christ. Jesus Christ made a promise to us. 
out of John 14, verse 13 and 14. Whatever you ask in my name, that I will do. That the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. And so, if you met that lame person, it's your relationship with Christ. Say that. You can believe what he has just said to you in John 14, verses 13 and 14. And say to that lame person that you have Christ and declare healing into the person's life. If we are not able to do that, if you are not able to do that, is it not time to assess your relationship with Christ? Oh, how he desire intimacy with you. He has saved you for himself and he desired that intimacy. And to the extent you have an intimacy with him, I believe with all my heart that you should be able with confidence say to anybody that you too have Christ. My prayer is that we will make our relationship with Christ the priority in our life. Let us forever know that it is a personal thing. It is not a corporate thing. Yes, we come together to pray together. We go to our churches. We pray together. We study the Bible together. But at the end of the day, it is a personality. And that is why when Peter spoke, he spoke in singular. I want to believe you will come to terms with the fact that he has saved you with his precious blood and he desired intimacy with you. Would you give him that intimacy? Would you give him that intimacy? He's looking for it. To pour his goodness to you. And so that you can be a blessing to others. But it comes at the expense of laying it all down for him. And walking with him diligently. This is what it means to have Christ. This is what it means to have Christ. And it is my prayer that from this day forward, you will make your personal relationship with Christ a priority in your life. And may the Spirit of Christ help you to do so. In the mighty name of Jesus. And for Peter, when he spoke in the name of Jesus, Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk, he didn't stop there. The Bible says, taking the man by the right hand, he held him up and strength came into his knee. And anger. Will you be the hand that lifts somebody up? After we have prayed, will you be that hand? Can God trust you with His name? Can God trust you to make you His hand that you are able? to lift people up from their condition. I believe in prayer. I believe in prophetic utterances. But after we have prayed, after we have declared things into people's life, 
I will will it to be a hand to lift them up. Men of God, there may be people in your church who are suffering. They cannot even put food on the table. Why don't you put measures in place and be the hand to lift them up from their condition? If we fail to do that, we make meaningless the fellowship that Christ has called us into. People of God, beyond the prayer, let us be vessels for God to use us to lift people from their condition. For what you know, the people you help today may be used of God to open chances and opportunities for you. The best example that I know can be found in the first book of Samuel, chapter 30. It talks of a group of Amalekites raiding the camp of David and his men in Ziglar, taking captives, their sons and daughters, and their wives. And when David inquired of the Lord, the Lord said to him, go after them, you will rescue your people. And so David and his men went. They didn't know where to turn. And they found a young man. The Bible says he was an Egyptian, Egyptian slave. And he was left by his Amalekite master to die because he was ill. And David and his men gave him food. And they gave him water. And the Bible says they revived him. And after they revived him, he was the vessel that God used to show where the Amalekites were. Had they left him to die? Had they not lifted him up? and revived him with the food and water that they gave him. Maybe it was going to be impossible for them to find the Amalekites and recapture their properties and take their wives back home. So be the person to lift people up. Be the person to lift people up. You remember Joseph in prison? He saw the countenance of the butler and the cup bearer. He could have said, I don't need them in my life. But that's not what he did. He found out what was bothering them. He ended up interpreting a dream for each of them. Guess what? It was one of them who spoke of Joseph to Pharaoh and Joseph left prison. It pays to lift people up. And like I've said, you will never know whom God will use to bless you. Just because the person is down today, does not mean he's going to remain there forever. The people that you do good to, they are the people that God will use to bless you. Be that hand to lift somebody up. 
be the hand to lift somebody up. And for the man, the Bible says, when he entered the temple, jumping and praising God, people were filled with wonder and amazement. Can you imagine if any of them had despised this man? Where would they go? Now that this man is able to stand shoulder to shoulder with them. My friend, dear believer, dear people of God, just because somebody is down today does not mean they're going to remain there. Do not despise people because of their condition. Do not despise people because of what they may be facing. The Jesus Christ that we serve, oh, how he was filled with empathy. I pray in the name of Jesus that the same empathy of Christ will fill our hearts in the mighty name of Jesus. And may that spirit of Christ reign in us. That we will respect people irrespective of their status in, in society. And like I said, God may use them to bless you in the long run. You better not despise people. And for this man, when the Lord Jesus Christ touched him, he became a wonder and amazement to the people. I pray in the name of Jesus that the Lord will put a new hunger in your heart to seek intimacy with him. Say that your life too will be a wonder and amazement to people. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I pray again that the hand of God will be upon you to seek intimacy with him. That the spirit of Christ will continually burden your heart to know that he cherishes your intimacy and that he will help you to give yourself to that intimacy in the mighty name of Jesus. And for this paralyzed lame man, when Jesus Christ touched him, he had a choice. He could have gone home to show forth his newfound ability to walk or to go to the temple and pray just as everybody else was doing. And he did the admirable thing. He went to the temple praising God. He made a choice to go to the feet of Jesus Christ in his temple. If you are listening to me and you don't know this Jesus, why don't you make that choice to come to him so that you too can go to the temple with other believers and rejoice and praise this Christ for lifting you up from your condition of sin. If you want to make that choice, why don't you pray this prayer with me? If you want to make that choice, why don't you pray this prayer with me? In the name of Jesus, I pray this prayer with you. Lord Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner. I know I cannot help myself from my sinful condition. I believe you came to die to wash me of my sins. I believe 
you died and rose again to give me a right standing with God. Lord Jesus, I confess you as my Lord and my personal Savior. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Amen. If you have prayed that prayer, you were saved. I pray that the Spirit of Christ will help you to seek intimacy with Him. And may the Spirit of Christ embolden you, give you confidence to seek such an intimacy with Him that you can stand and declare that you have the name of Christ. No, that the relationship with Christ is the personal thing. Take it very personal and seek intimacy with him. And let Christ make you his hand to lift people up. What a legacy of faith that you live your world. God bless you. Until then, this has been the House of Prayer with Dr. Toffe. God bless you and make you a blessing. Amen. The House of Prayer with Dr. Atatofe, proclaiming Jesus Christ through the word and prayer.